Hello and welcome to this video on should you delete cases with missing values. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address a question that comes up frequently, and that is about missing data. So is it okay to delete cases that have missing values? In this video, I want to discuss the pro and the cons. And this isn't a typo because there really aren't any pros, plural, to deleting cases with missing values. As we will see, there are only a whole bunch of cons. There's really only one pro that I can think of. If you can think of others, then please leave a comment in the comment section below, but I only, when I was thinking about this, I could only really think of one pro and then a lot of cons. And so that's what I want to discuss with you. And I also want to give you some alternative solutions and talk about what you can do better or how you can do better than deleting cases with missing values. So let's talk about the one pro that I came up with when I thought about this issue of deleting cases with missing values, you probably know that what is called list-wise deletion is very popular where every case gets deleted from the data set when there's one variable missing for the model or analysis that you want to run. And so then if the uh, individual misses one score on a set of variables, then the case would be deleted entirely and therefore this type of analysis is also known as complete case analysis. So what is a pro of uh, or a benefit of complete case analysis or list-wise deletion? And so really the one thing that I could think of is that it's simple. The simplicity of just simply getting rid of cases that have missing values and then analyzing complete cases in a way is very simplistic and then down the road so to say you're dealing with a complete data matrix complete cases and so to say in a way you don't have to deal with anything anymore you think yeah in fact you may have to deal with stuff that you don't even know is going wrong because you got rid of those cases that had missing scores but in a way so say it makes your life easier because then you have simply complete um, cases and you don't have to think about what to do with missing values anymore and so really that's where it ends for me i can't think of any other benefit of um, list-wise deletion or complete case analysis other than that it's simple. So let's talk about the cons. So what are the cons? Obviously, when you delete cases, you reduce your sample size. So you throw away information because these cases do have some data. They have values on, on some of the variables and assuming that those are valid scores, then you're losing those. You're losing the information on those variables for which those cases with partial data do provide some information and do provide valid scores. And that has negative consequences because it leads to a loss of statistical power. As we know, larger sample sizes provide greater statistical power and we hate to lose statistical power because then what can happen is that it can compromise our tests of statistical significance. They may be underpowered. We may not be able to reject the null hypothesis in a test of statistical significance or null hypothesis significance test, even though we should reject it. So we may simply have an underpowered study that allows us, that does not allow us to um, reject the null hypothesis when it is false. And so then this leads to a type two error where we incorrectly fail to reject the null hypothesis due to lack of statistical power. Also, when you have a, um, an, an underpowered study or reduced sample size, you are confidence intervals become 
larger, your standard errors become larger, so you have wider confidence intervals, meaning there's less precision in the estimation of statistical um, parameters or st estimates of parameters such as for example estimating a sample mean, estimating a sample regression coefficient, estimating a sample correlation coefficient, all those estimates become less precise when your sample size is smaller. So that is a problem and that's not unfortunately the worst problem that you can have with listwise deletion. Another problem is that your estimates may not only be underpowered and imprecise but they may also be biased because the remaining sample may not be representative of the full sample that you could have obtained so to say because if the cases with missing values, if those missing values are not missing completely at random, then it may be the case that your remaining sample is no longer representative, is no longer a simple, simple random sample of the complete cases and then that can lead to bias. So then you um, flat out end up with incorrect statistical estimates, meaning incorrect correlation coefficients, for example, incorrect regression coefficients, mean differences that are not reflecting the true mean differences in the population. So that is maybe even worse than the power problem because then you end up with false results, potentially incorrect estimates of your coefficients of interest. So those are the big cons why this is basically a no-no. Yeah? So listwise deletion nowadays is seen by many, probably most statisticians as a total no-no that you shouldn't do. So let's ask ourselves then to understand this better. Is there ever a situation where you could get away with listwise deletion? Is there ever a situation where you would say, okay, yeah, it's fine. And so really the only situation is when your remaining sample is representative, is a simple random sample of the complete cases. And that would only be the case if the missing scores were missing completely at random, meaning if missingness is not related to your data. There's no correlation with the dropout or between the dropout, the propensity for missingness and the information in your data. So it's, it's completely random that the scores are missing and has nothing to do with your variables with your data. Then it's okay as long as your sample or your remaining sample is large enough to where you retain enough power, then you may not care. Let's say, for example, you have a thousand cases and three cases are missing completely at random or are missing some, uh, some ver values on some of the variables completely at random. You may not care that you only have 997 left because you may still have enough statistical power and it may only minimally affect your standard errors and confidence intervals. And the missing scores are missing completely at random. That would be the only situation where you would say, okay, it may be fine to use listwise deletion because I have so much data left and my remaining data is representative of the full sample. It is the same as if I had complete data, except I'm missing three cases or four cases or what, and I don't care because that does not really lower my power that much. I'm still gonna find um, statistical significance for the effects of interest. That would be the only situation. And the problem is that data and practice typically are not missing completely at random. Missing completely at random or MCAR is the most restrictive missing data mechanism. And so that may not hold true. That's the only mechanism where listwise deletion would be acceptable, so say given that you have enough data left, assuming that not too many cases are missing. But that's not so realistic, or at least it's very restrictive. It is more common or 
more likely that the data are not missing completely at random, but that they are what we call missing at random or MAR. MAR is a less restrictive mechanism that does not assume that missingness is completely unrelated to the data. Remember, missing completely at random means missingness has nothing to do with any of the variables in your data set. In contrast, under MAR, missingness can be related to variables in the data set as long as it's not your dependent variable. So to say, if you have independent variables or auxiliary variables that predict that um, are that uh, predict missingness, that is fine, or that are correlated with missingness, that is fine. It can just not be that missingness are missingness is on the dependent variable itself, because then you would have no way of knowing, so say, why these cases are missing. And so MAR is less restrictive because there can be a relationship between some of the variables in your data set and the dropout or missing values, and then that is something that we can address. And But this is something that with listwise deletion, you would get bias. So if you use listwise deletion, you kick those cases out, then that could lead to bias under MAR. So listwise deletion really only is unbiased when you have missing completely at random data. And that is so say, a key uh, reason why listwise deletion is typically seen as a no-no. In contrast, modern methods for missing data handling, such as full information, maximum likelihood, or FIML, FIML, or, or multiple imputation, MI, they work even when the data only satisfy the MAR mechanism. So for FIML and multiple imputation data do not have to be missing completely at random or the missing scores don't have to be missing completely at random. They can be missing at random and still you will get unbiased results when you use FIML and multiple imputation and therefore these methods are preferred. Also these methods since they use all available data and don't delete cases retain more statistical power and they have less potential for bias because they work even with MAR. And you can include so-called auxiliary variables when you use FIML or multiple imputation. That means including variables that are correlated with missingness and then that information can be brought into the analysis and that can further reduce bias and it can lead to increased statistical power. I have uh, other videos on this channel on auxiliary variables and how to include them so check those out as well. So, But the message here is that listwise deletion has almost no advantages other than it's so to say apparent simplicity, which later on, though, so to say, might result in problems, though. And really what you should do is you should use modern methods for addressing missing values, such as full information, maximum likelihood, or multiple imputation, which make use of all available data. They don't waste any data. They have they make less restrictive assumptions about the missing data mechanism, they retain more statistical power, and they have the potential to uh, show less bias or result in less bias in your statistical results. So there's really no reason to prefer listwise deletion over those methods because they are now readily available in many statistical software programs. Full information maximum likelihood is especially available in programs for structural equation modeling and factor analysis such as M+, Lavan, Ames, and those programs can also be used to run simple statistical analyses such as regression for example or correlation analysis and then you can uh, take advantage of that way to deal with missing data when you use these types of techniques. Also multiple imputation is now widely available in R, in M+, in other software programs as well, so that can be used also. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about proper missing data handling and why you should not delete cases with missing values. 
If you liked the video, then please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a, case, uh, a course on how to deal with missing values in the M Plus software. And I'll see you next time.